A window pass-through unit or a window feed-through unit like this one is an awesome way to pass your coax cables or other cables into your ham radio shack without needing to drill holes into your wall or drill holes into your ceiling to pass the cables through. So it's a perfect solution for those of you who are looking for a minimally invasive way to get your cables into your ham shack. And if it's installed correctly, you can also really keep a great insulation in your window from the outdoor so you're not getting a lot of air seeping through. I purchased this one from Rocket Machine Works at the Huntsville Ham Fest, and I'm gonna show you how to install a window feed-through unit like this one. This is not sponsored by Rocket Machine Works. I just really love the construction and the quality of what they've done. So I'm gonna show you how to install one properly, coming up. This is Ham Radio. First, you need to select the window feed-through unit that works best for you. I'm using the micro patch from a company called Rocket Machine Works that has three coax connectors that work with the standard PL259 coax. They're really high quality Amphenol bulkhead connectors and the main part of the unit is nice, heavy stainless steel. They also have other options that come with more connectors if you need them. You're also gonna need the window wing kit, which provides two marine grade HDPE plastic pieces that go on either side of the steel centerpiece. I chose this one for the high quality construction and good insulation, but there are other feed through units on the market if you need more options. If you're using another window feed through, this guide will still help you install it, although the steps will be just a little bit different. First, let's take all the materials out of the box. It's called Window Wing Kit by Rocket Machine Works. You should have a stainless steel center unit with coax connectors, two marine grade HDPE plastic wings, four bolts to connect the wings to the center unit and gaskets that go between the wings and the steel center unit for insulation. I'm just putting together the pieces here to check and make sure everything looks good. Next, you wanna carefully decide where the feed through is going to sit in your window. It's critical to figure out exactly where on the window the feed through will sit so you can get the correct measurement before cutting. Your window might have various grooves and edges and this can be a bit tricky. You can use the wings to test how the feed through will sit in the window to make sure you're taking the right measurement and try closing the window to get a feel for where it will sit once it's wedged. This is a very critical step because if you measure wrong and you cut the window wings too short, you might end up needing to improvise to fill the gaps later or even purchase new wings, although it's not the end of the world. With the correct spot selected, measure the width using a tape measure. Now that you have your measurement for the size of the window, you need to assemble the unit before you can cut it to the correct width. Before you connect the connector bolts, be sure to apply the anti-lock solution that comes with the wing kit to the threads on the connector bolts. I love that they include this solution because it just makes sure the threads don't lock and you can easily disassemble the feed through unit later if needed. I used a paper towel to cover the bolt with the solution. Then screw the bolts into the holes on the side of the steel center unit. Place the rubber gasket over the connector bolts, which is going to form an insulation layer between the metal centerpiece and the plastic wings. Finally, you can push the wings onto the connector bolts firmly and you have the unit fully assembled. Now it's time to cut the unit to the correct length. Remember, it's better to cut too long than too short. You can always use a file or cut again to make the wings shorter, but you can't make it longer without buying new wings. Use a pen to mark your wing at the correct length. Use a triangle to draw a line across the plastic wing and then use a handsaw to cut it. I made my cut slightly shorter than the measured window length in order to leave a little room for weather stripping on either end of the wings. I also recommend placing a weather seal strip around all four sides of the feed through unit to help create a better seal with the window. You can pick up weather seal stripping from your local hardware store. I'm using 3 8 inch weather stripping from Home Depot. 
Ta-da. It is put together. It's got weather stripping. Let's see how it fits. All right, we're back at the window. Let's see how I did. With your unit cut to size, place it in the window to test the fit. It should fit snugly in the space you identified earlier. If you cut your feed-through unit a little bit too long, then it'll be no problem to shorten it here by making another cut or using a file for fine tuning. If you cut your wings too short, don't panic either. You can try cutting a small piece of wood or use a popsicle stick to fill the gaps. Or worst case scenario, you can purchase another set of plastic wings from Rocket Machine Works. So I might play with the weather strip a little bit on this side, but this all looks really, really good. I've got weather strip on this side, a tight seal. I do really need uh, something to install up here now to keep a strong downward constant force on this because what tends to happen is it's coming up off this weather seal. So I need something that pushes um, on both sides. And then, uh, yeah, maybe I'll kind of fill the crack with a little bit of other, with another material, but overall, it's looking really good. It's embedded in here, really good. And yeah, so I will, uh, I'll fill those cracks. I'll add, and then I am going to add something to push down on this and that'll be it. A successful window pass through with my, uh, three cables. I might have to flip this, might have to flip this upside down actually, because the, I'm too close to the edge to actually, you know, I might be too close to the edge to actually screw my coax in. So I might have to flip this upside down, but Overall looking really good. Before placing the unit into the window, you may want to go ahead and connect your ground and coax now. I'm going to use 10 gauge green wire for my ground. Use wire strippers to strip the end, then use a crimp and connector on the end. I'll then thread the bolt through the hole and connect the ground. The unit should come with these bolts, but you can always pick up more if needed. Just make sure to use stainless steel so that they are conductive for your ground connection. And then we'll take our crimper. Our crimper has a color-coded yellow section for 10 through 12 gauge wire. We're gonna use that section and we're gonna place a nice good crimp on that. And if it's crimped successfully, should be able to tug and then it comes through. Now we can go ahead and connect this up to our ground here through one of these holes and we'll go ahead and connect the two coaxes before we put it into the window. I'm gonna take one of these washers and push it through first. Push this through. And place the eye hook here. The second washer. And I'll place the nut. And just use my hand to get that tight. And I'll go ahead and plug the other hole. It actually came with its own plug, but I lost it. So I'm just gonna use a regular bolt and nut here. And then I'll use my screwdriver to go ahead and tighten both of those down. All right. Next, let's connect our coax. You can place lightning arresters here as well if needed. In my case, my lightning arresters are going to be placed near my ground rod outside so you won't see them here. With the coax and ground line connected, you're ready to place the unit into the window for the final installation. If you're a perfectionist like me, you can take a few final steps to make your installation really clean. I installed an eye hook for strain relief since I'm using heavy RG8 coax and my window is pretty high up. I purchased these window lock bars on Amazon to apply some downward pressure to make a better seal as well as provide security. 
And finally, I'm also going to fill any gaps with weather seal tape to add extra insulation. Now we're ready for some fun. We can connect the coax on the inside into our radio and start operating. I really hope this video helped you install your window feed through unit. It's a great solution if you're just not quite ready to drill holes into your wall or ceiling for those coax cables. And this is not a sponsored video by Rocket Machine Works. Again, I just really like their product. I'm gonna include a text lesson with this video that has a full materials list as well as more detailed step-by-step -step instructions. I know how frustrating it can be if you're missing just one piece and you can't find it, so I'll be sure to include that. And I'm gonna be using this to operate my home station where I'm gonna have VHF and UHF capabilities as well as HF. So I'm gonna be making some more detailed instruction videos that show my full home station setup, including my antennas for HF as well as VHF and UHF. This is James Cribbs in Zero WRL saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.